Ever feel like you could be on the next episode of Hoarders? While that's likely probably not the case, we are all guilty of being pack rats. I know I find myself saying, hmm, I might need this one day, and then one day never comes. Today's video is all about tackling that clutter. Whether you're new to the channel or joining us again, welcome and thank you. My name is Emily and I'm a proud resident of St. Johns County, Florida and your local real estate agent with Florida Homes Realty and Mortgage. This channel is all things St. Johns County and real estate and we have a lot of fun. We're glad to have you along so make sure to hit the subscribe button, check the bell icon so that you can be notified for our new videos every week. Okay, picture this. Your house is a mess. There's piles of stuff everywhere. Closets are full, drawers need organizing. I mean, let's be real, it's overwhelming, right? Well, not if you have a list of ways that you can just get started and help tackle that mess that is overwhelming you and causing you probably some extra stress and anxiety. All right, so first things first, just start. Start somewhere. But that pile's not gonna get any smaller unless you start tackling it, am I right? And then secondly, stop adding to the clutter. Don't bring in the mail or things from your car and set it on that entryway table or in the hallway or on the dining room table or your kitchen island. Put it away the minute you walk in the door or the minute you're finished using it. My mom always said, put things back where you found them. And as a kid, it was irritating because who wants to clean up when you're in the middle of still having fun? But as an adult, I find myself going, oh, this is why my mom said, always put your stuff away when you're finished with it because it ends up adding up. And before you know it, you have a house full of a mess of things that you just never put away. So if you start by putting it away first and foremost, you're gonna save yourself some time and future energy and effort. Then start small. Start with a drawer, the junk drawer, the notorious Southern junk drawer, where you can find anything from a battery to a paper clip, maybe some chopsticks, takeout sauces, junk mail, you name it, it's in the junk drawer. Growing up, we definitely had a junk drawer and it's probably twice the size of the junk drawer that I have now. But anytime I'm looking for something, a random screw or anything that, you know, may have gone missing, I say, hey, check the junk drawer. And chances are, if you can't find exactly what you need, you're probably gonna find something that you needed the day before. So start with that junk drawer, clean out all those items. And honestly, start with the trash. Take a trash bag around with you every single room in your house and just pick up obvious pieces of trash. Maybe it's the leftover junk mail, like I mentioned, those sauce packets or napkins, um, anything that you don't need, empty boxes. If it's not trash and it's recyclable, have a separate container for that so you can just recycle those items. And you'll be amazed at how much junk and clutter you remove just by removing the trash first. Make a plan, make a plan for your organization and your decluttering. Don't just willy nilly start somewhere and expect to get the entire house done in two hours. Make yourself a list. I like to start with a list of the different rooms and places that I'm gonna organize and I prioritize them with, with which ones kind of cause me the most eh, if you will. So if that room's the largest and it's the most overwhelming, Maybe save that for second or third on the list and we'll kind of get to, to why here in a minute. But make yourself a list, start with the room, if you can, that has will have the most impact. And like I said, if it's not the biggest room, that's okay. Save that for second or third because what you're gonna find is if you start small, you start weeding out the trash and you get to that space that causes you the most aggravation, once that's clean, you're gonna kind of stand back and go, man, that felt good. And the power of that accomplishment is gonna drive you 
to keep going. So that's why I say save that room for second or third, because once you kind of tackle a few of those small places, make those improvements, you see the way things are going, you're gonna to wanna to keep going and tackling that big giant mess wherever it might be isn't gonna quite be so bad. Maybe set yourself a time. Say, I have, uh, let's see, two hours, but I've got all these other things I need to do today. So I'm gonna start with 30 minutes. Give yourself a small increment of time to just get going. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it is here and there. I started organizing our garage the other day, which was a giant mess. And there is still a small mess, but I started and I said, I'm gonna tackle this and I'm gonna do it for one hour. And I picked a small piece of the garage. And instead of taking everything out and having this giant mess in the driveway, which you look at and go, oh man, what have I gotten myself into? This is a giant mess and now I gotta put it all back? You've got to be kidding me. So I didn't do that because that's what I normally would have done. Instead, I took a small section, I did pull some items out, I sorted out the trash, and then I was able to organize those items back. And it was just a small piece of the garage, but it felt so good because I could see the difference that what I was doing was making. And wouldn't you know, the next day, I went out and I tackled a bigger section of the garage because it just was that domino effect of feel good. And now, with the exception of the small piece of the garage still left, I walk out and I'm like, eh, that looks pretty good. I can actually walk through here. So that's just, you know, what you gotta gotta do. Another really important thing to remember is while you're already taking the stuff out, while you're throwing away the trash, recycling, give away items that you no longer use. If it's one of those, I'm gonna save this for a rainy day kind of item, and that rainy day has come and gone for the last five years and you have not touched it, chances are you're probably not going to. So take that item, put it in a stack for donate if it's still in good condition. You've got your trash pile, you've got recyclables, and then that way you have some feel good stuff surrounding your mess. If there are items that you feel like you could sell, of course, make yourself a sale pile and then you've earned some extra cash on top of it. Make sure that you set yourself some goals. They should be obtainable and they should be measurable. I personally am a checklist person. So I'll write myself a to-do list pretty much every weekend and check it off or strike through it when I've completed that task. It kind of just makes you feel good that you've accomplished something and you can physically see besides the improvement in the room, your progress throughout that day or that weekend. If you need to, feel free to phone a friend, call for help, it's okay. And sometimes we need that extra push, especially if a lot of the items have an emotional attachment for us. It's not easy to get rid of those things that have some sentimental value. And you don't necessarily have to get rid of those items if there's a purpose and a place for it. But what you don't wanna do is get attached to some of these smaller things that really don't mean a whole lot and they just pile up. I don't know about you, but I wanna get rid of the stuff so that I can enjoy you know, being in my home and not feel surrounded by just stuff that's been thrown around um, and collected all of this, this time. And most importantly, make sure you have fun doing this. Call your friend, get some help, tackle these projects together and have fun while doing it. It doesn't have to be stressful. It doesn't have to be a hassle. Just have fun. So I hope you take even just one or two of these things that we talked about today and apply it to your life to help you declutter and not look so much like a hoarder or a pack rat so that you can feel a little bit more free and a little bit lighter in the stuff department. <laughs> Thank you for joining us and I hope to see you again next week.